The Amado Pell, for those of you who don't know, was the tall ship that floated next to the Lady Nelson Wharf off Port Macquarie's town green. Now, as many people have noticed recently, and we've had quite a few people calling us here about this, the ship has vanished, and it's left the wharf looking decidedly bare. After more than seven years in Port Macquarie, where exactly has the Almadel Pel- has the Almado Pell gone, and is it coming back? Well, Doug Breakwell was a volunteer who worked on the Almado Pell while it was here in Port Macquarie. Alma, um, <laughs> I was about to call you Alma. Doug, welcome to the It's Time to Talk program. Good evening, and thanks very much for inviting me. And thank you very much for coming in, because we need to clear this up, because there are rumours, there is misinformation. Where's it gone, Doug? Where is the Alma Pell as we speak? Well, as you know, this boat was launched on the 10th of October 1903, so she's 106 years, years old this October. Quite often with wooden vessels, even though you do maintenance the whole year round, they've got to go in for a refit. Alma's at a stage now she needs a massive refit which could take up to two years. Now, I remember you mentioning that to me earlier tonight. I'm astounded that a refit of a, of a ship could take two years. That's a massive refit, isn't it? It is because, all right, just take the hull, for instance. We had it out of the water for six weeks, and all we did was cleaned all the grooves out, recorked it, put the corking back in, and replaced seven planks. That took us six weeks about 15 of us mm. and we're working ending up to 14 hours a day so in other words massive job it's a massive job because <laughs> all the timber's got to be cut to shape mm-hmm. and the proper length and fit properly okay so yeah. where has it gone for its refit then because i mean surely it c- couldn't it have uh, gone somewhere locally where is it right now at the moment it's down in melbourne it, it's moored at docklands i believe it's going to williamstown to come out of the water now i have been informed it possibly will be out of the water for 12 months while i do the hull right they've got to take all the planking off the hull check all the main frame to make sure it's still sound if that's okay then they'll replank it get it back in the water, then they've got to do the deck. Doug, it sounds like a huge job. It is. And the big question, here's the one that everybody wants to know. After its two-year refit, which is very sad in itself, it's going to be away for at least two years, is the Almado Pell coming back to Port Macquarie? Just before it left, one of the directors and the captain who took it down said after it's refitted, yes, it'll be coming back here for a visit, for how long we don't know yet at the main problem at the moment is money with it because it's going to take anything up to two to three million to redo this job and the market at the moment with money is mm. very tight and i imagine the owners of the ship are going to be wanting to make it a working vessel yes the idea is to get it back into survey to turn it back into a sail training vessel for young people to learn to sail the vessel also it can be used for functions Mm-hmm. And uh, clearly, if it's uh, if it's money that is the bo- the bottom line, they're money going to be making more money in a in a busy city like Melbourne than Port Macquarie. One would think. That's hard to judge. Yes, if it gets back into sail training, it could. Mm. But what we've been told, yes, it will definitely be coming back to port. But not necessarily for good. Stay here, no. At one stage, it was moved to where they'll still do it. It'll come back here for six months at a time. But this is up to the directors now. But the captain has assured me it will be coming back for a visit. So in a nutshell, it's it's gone for a minimum of two years from Port Macquarie. Yes. After that, we're not entirely sure. We know it will come back at least for a visit, though. Oh, yes. Yes, all the volunteers have been told to. If we go down there, we're quite welcome to go on board and have a look. And we'd all like to see it back. Who owns the ship, Doug? It's Sail and Adventure. They're a non-profit organisation. They actually per- purchased the boat off IXL Jams. Am I right in, in the information that I have read uh, over the past few days that it also, in, early on in, in its life, perhaps even in 1903, it was delivering jam and empty glass jars and timber between Tasmania and, and the mainland? Is that correct? That didn't eventuate till after 1916. Right. What actually happened there, Frederick Dopel worked it up and down this eastern seaboard to Sydney, but also in the meantime, it did trips from Port Macquarie to New Zealand, taking the hardwood over there for their railway line sleepers, and brought cowrie pine back to Sydney. Wow. When that finished, the railway line had come through up to Yurunga, so Alma didn't have any work. It was then sold to Henry Jones, who put in the part of his jam fleet. 
that's when she started from Port Phillip Bay down to Tasmania, to Hobart. She took explosive general cargo down, hue and pine, and jam back. Right. She holds the world record for the most number of crossings of Bass Strait, 587 crossings. For her size vessel and the shape of the vessel, it holds a speed record. Wow, that's interesting. And I'll tell you what, crossing Bass Strait that many times, obviously there was a lot of something going, being transported back and forth, probably for timber more than anything. Yeah? Timber, yes. That's when two gentlemen came down and approached IXL Jams and they bought it off them to turn it into a sail training vessel. Right, OK. That took 11 years to rebuild it because it was in such a state. And it was sailed up and down, put Phil Bay taking young school children, teaching them sailing. I have seen videos of it, and you see young children, go, or when I say young children, young adults, they'd go on board, and as one boy said, I can't climb that rigging. <laughs> I can't do that. By the time he finished his first trip, he could climb the rigging and unfurl the sails and do everything. A lot of them learnt a lot, and quite a few of them have gone to sea in future life. So the Alma turned boys into men, did it? Yes, and girls. Oh, and, and girls. Oh, I yes, apologise. there was no discrimination. <laughs> she could carry a crew of 14, 36 trainees, 18 girls, 18 boys. I also understand um, that Alma was used during the war, during World War II. Apparently they added engines to it in, to, to make it make sure it was up to speed during the war. Originally, just before the war, they had one gardener, and I'm not sure of the second motor, they were mismatched. Yeah. But during the war, they took both diesels out and they put petrol motors in her. Now, she did a trip up around Borneo, New Guinea. She mainly carried troops and supplies to the troops around the islands. But she was used during the war. 